My name is Jeff Coe. I've been uh, teaching driver education here in the Boise School District for, I think this is my 13th year. And I've been the supervisor of driver education for the Boise School District for the previous, I think this is my eighth year of doing that. So um, I like teaching driver education so much that I've hired myself to continue to teach. I teach three classes a year because uh, I, I love teaching driver ed. Um, about a year ago, I made the mistake of uh, inviting Audra to come to my parent class, and she came, and, uh, and so you know now she asked me to do this, and so uh, I, I've got some stuff to share with you about parents, about parent class, and some other ways you can involve parents in the driver education process. GDL, um, you know, was put in place to help us get the parents involved. For those of you that grew up in Idaho, uh, you may recall that um, when you took driver education, all you had to do was do the six hours of practice in the car, and then they gave you a license, and you could go out and drive anywhere you wanted. <coughs> it was a nighttime restriction if you were under if you were under 16. Um, thank goodness, on January 1st of 2001, we got GDL in Idaho and graduated driver license. It's only 13 years old. If GDL was a kid trying to take driver ed, they're not even old enough yet to take driver ed. It began on January 1st of 2001. Uh, if we don't get the parents involved, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to assume anything about the program you work in or, or how you approach what you do, but if we just you know, take the kids through, we do the six hours of behind the wheel, uh, we do the minimum of six hours of observation, 30 hours of classroom, then we hand them a permit and they're gone. Uh, and we've never had any interaction with the parents. We're assuming a whole lot there. We're assuming that the parents are really going to understand what the graduated driver licensing is all about. We're assuming that the parents are going to uh, be fully cognizant of all the things that they need to do during that time. We're assuming that the parents understand that their kids aren't a very good driver yet. Uh, and so we're, we're assuming a lot of things there that can get us and the kids and the family in trouble. So the question is, is GDL enough? Is it doing all that we as educators hope for? And I think it is as long as we involve the family. And we have to be the one that gets the family involved in that. I personally know of families that went down and they signed off saying they had the 50 hours and they didn't have anything close to 50 hours. And I'm certain some of you know of situations similar to that. You know, the parents said it works out if you do the 50 hours of driving over six months, that works out to 17 minutes a day. And some families, for some reason, don't get that 17 minutes a day of driving for their kids. So, talking about parental involvement. Uh, this is the way it used to be written in our, in our, in our laws here in Idaho. You had to have contact with each student, parent, or guardian. It was required at least once during the course. And that contact would be by a phone call. Could be, be my email. Uh, U.S. mail, or that it could be an in-person contact. <coughs> now that it's been changed so that that kind of contact re it, uh, applies to online courses. And maybe some of you deal with online courses. But if you're teaching a regular you know, classroom setting where they come in and work with you, that doesn't apply anymore. What does apply now is this. This is a new law. It's, it's, uh, it is in effect now. The legislature, the last legislative session, um, they enacted this and it says there that instructors will conduct at least one parent night with each driver education class. The parent or guardian must attend prior to the student <coughs> receiving their supervised instruction permit. That's going to put it, uh, it's already, I mean, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out how we're going to implement that for our summer programs. Uh, Boise, we run 18 or 12 classes in the summer. But those are during the daytime hours when it's going to be hard to get parents to come in. We also run 18 classes during the school year. And those, it's much easier because those are in the evenings. You can get the parents to come in then. Um, but that's the way the law is written now. And that's why Audra's invited me to come down here and talk to you today because I've, I've been doing a parent class since the very first year I taught driver education. Yes? So what do we do if both parents are in jail? Well, there's a, there's a unique circumstance. You know, I run into this stuff. What, you know, what it says right there that I'm going to violate the law if I give it to the grandparents. Well, no, it's a parent or guardian. That kid's, well, if both parents are locked up, somebody's in charge of that kid. So, so they're not legal guardians. 
Well, I, I'm not going to get into the legality of that. You can talk to Audra about that. All I'm saying is that somebody has to be there. Some adult, a responsible adult person needs to be okay, there at that parent class. I, I just was worried about the way it's written. Right. Because I deal with a lot of people that aren't their parents. Yeah, I've, and I've had grandparents come to the parent class. Yeah, I've had, I've had, you know, but there is always somebody that comes in. Is that a guardian? Then? I'm sorry? Is that a guardian or not? Well, I don't check to see. It's a responsible adult, though, from the family. That's all I require. Well, that's what I do, too, but I don't, this is what you're saying, that's a law now, or a rule. Well, it leads me to my next slide. <laughs> 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 I had to pay him to come in and talk about this so I could go to that next slide. <laughs> you know, not all of us are going to approach this the same way. Um, and I've got three different examples here of what we're already doing in the Boise District. In some of our classes, the parents come in the first day, the very first day of the driver education class, and at that time the instructor can introduce himself or herself. They can go over scheduling. They can go over carpooling issues, whatever things need to be taken care of. Uh, you can go over syllabus at that time. Uh, talk about class expectations, what things that you're looking for from that student. I don't do the first day thing. You know, I handle that with my website, and I handle that with the materials I send home, and I do it with a phone call. I call every parent before the first class, and then I send a letter to them before the first class. Um, what I do is the parent class at the end graduation night. And I set that up from day one. I tell the kids and the parents, block out this hour. It's a one hour thing. Block it out because you have to be here. I hand out permits that day and I don't hand out permits if you're not here because I schedule it so it's the 30th hour of instruction for the kids. So obviously the kid has to be there. That's his 30th, 30th hour. And then mom or dad shows up with them. Usually I get two parents to come in. Uh, <coughs> But, I, you know, and I've never, I've never, ever, ever, in the 13, 14, whatever it is, years I've been doing this, I've never had a kid show up without mom or dad or both, or some guardian. <laughs> they want that permit. And I harp on it all the time. In my closure, every single classroom, every single time I say, when is this due? When is that due? When is the parent class? What time is the parent class? Where is it going to be? Every, every day I do that when we finish class. So it's, it's drilled into their head. Now something we do in, in Boise, and I assumed for years that everybody did a parent drive. But I've, over the years I've come to find out that some places don't do a parent drive. If you're not doing one, I personally believe you're, you're passing up a, a tremendous opportunity to teach those parents what they need to do next. You know, I, I tell the parents, and, and we do this the last drive. All of our students do a parent drive. Um, and we do this on, a, on an evening or on a weekend so that the parents can show up. During the summer, I'm amazed in the summer, we get the parents to show up during the day because we teach drive right in the summer from 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. And the parents come in for the parent drive. But it's a great opportunity to have that parent, number one, see just how poor a driver their kid is. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to say, you know, this kid, your kid is not a good driver. You know, it takes years and years and years to become a good driver. You can't become a good driver in six hours. If I, I ask the parents at the parent class, I, I say, if I told you that I was going to take your child and in six hours of tr intense training, I was going to have them on stage at Carnegie Hall playing the piano, you'd think I was an idiot. Well, I'm telling you right now, I can't get your kid to be a good driver in six hours of practice. It doesn't, it does not occur. And so I tell them over and over, your kid is not, no, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> I just tell them, you know, we're, your kid is not a good driver. And, uh, and I want the parents to understand that this is really valuable to those parents that have their oldest child coming through your program. Because they don't remember what it was like maybe when they first started driving and how scary it was for them. And so I want them to see their kid drive. The other thing I like to do on a parent drive <clears throat> is to model behavior. I, I, I've got a little signal I do with my kids. If they're inside that three second cushion there that I like to have, that's the only time I ever get nervous when I'm teaching kids. I don't know about you guys, but when they're inside that three second cushion, my radar is going off. And so I just do this little signal here and it just means open up a gap, give me more of a gap there. And so I show the parents that. It's something they can do. I show the parents how I help the kids steer. 
you know, I try to take the hand and the wheel at the same time so the kid knows they're being helped there. If you just grab the wheel in a panic situation, that kid's going to steer the other way almost every time. When you're trying to pull here, that kid's going to go the opposite direction. So I show the parents that. And probably most importantly, the thing that I show the parents and tell them, and you've heard this from your kids, oh, my mom is going to be screaming at me every time. My mom is going to scream at me all the time. Or my dad's going to yell at me every, every time I try to make a turn. Well, I tell the parents and show the parents that, you know, yelling never produces a positive result. Yelling at a kid when they're learning to drive is going to produce a second error immediately. And then if you yell again, now we got a third error. And next thing you know, you got tears coming down or you're involved in some unfortunate uh, meeting with another vehicle. So the parent drive up, if you're not doing that in your program, I really, really urge you to do that. And that's that's face-to-face -face meeting with the parents there. It doesn't completely cover what the, the state is asking for. You still need to involve the parents with something else. And, that, and to me, that's an ideal time to have them come in for this parent class. Now we're ready for the next one. Some of the things I do, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and finish up. This, uh, what's, I forget Dad's name, but it's out of their comic strip. Uh, Zitz. Zitz. Zitz, yeah. <laughs> Several years ago, the kid was going through driver training, and it was awesome. They had some great cartoons in the paper. I, I copied about all of them. Anyway, Dad says, I used to dream about a life filled with excitement and danger. Then my kid got his learner's permit. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. And then here's the kid. I've only driven 30 hours this week. Who's up for an evening on the interstate? <laughs> so this is, this is just one of the slides that I do during the parent class. Um, you know, I show them, I explain to them in detail what the GDL is all about and what their re responsibilities are. I use the Zitz character for some of the some of the lessons I'm trying to get across to them. Here's another slide that I show them. And I tell them this is a terrible tragedy here. Terrible tragedy. Since those two wars began, that many American soldiers and GIs and, and Marines have uh, have been killed. But that, meant that many American teenagers were killed in car crashes during the same span of time. And like was mentioned earlier, uh, the very first presentation we saw this morning, you know, if, if there was a disease killing that many teenagers, we would invest billions of dollars to, to cure that disease. We would find a cure for that disease. But we're still killing teenagers at an un unimaginable rate. Uh, she said, what, oh, just over 4,000 a year is what she quoted. I've read I have numbers a little bit higher than that even. So that's another slide I show the parents. Uh, here's some information I give the parents. I've got a packet for all of you that I'll give to you before you leave here today. This is one of the things that I have in there, and it shows the kids' grade. Here's John Johnson. He graduated from Dry Red today. And this just tells, uh, I don't know if you can read the back, but it just basically goes through some of the stuff that we've done. And it gives them 14 more points that they can work on with their kid. And then it tells them, when a violation-free six-month uh, instruction period has been completed, your child may apply for an Idaho Class D driver's license. And I emphasize over and over and over again that six months is a minimum. I tell parents that, and the kids don't like it when you tell the parents that, but I emphasize to the parents that it's a minimum. If you want to keep that kid on that permit for a year, do it for a year, do it for two years. That permit doesn't expire until they're 18, year old, 18 years old and five days past that. So. Um, Anyway, then I give them their, the, the kid's classroom grade and the kid's driving grade. Now, after they look at the driving grade, they, they may be thinking, even after doing the parent drive, they may think, well, my kid's pretty good. He's got an 84% in that class. But uh, I also give them a driving rubric, the grades rubric, and here's where that kid was. Average driving for a rookie driver. Mastery of basic driving skills. Coaching is necessary. So I want the parents to see where their kid is that their kid is not ready to go off and, and drive all over the place without supervision and without lots of teaching from mom and dad. Jeff, did you say that was also in the packet? Um, this is not in the packet. I, 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 my, uh, my email address is up here at the end. Send me a thing and I'll, and I'll email it to you. And this was put together by some Boise educators. Uh, there, there's one right there, Aaron McKinnon, and Wayne Norman did it with you, right? Yeah, Wayne and yeah, we all yeah. Get together. yeah that's, it, it, it's an excellent rubric. 
I encourage all of our instructors in the Boise District to follow this pretty closely. I don't think it does anybody any good if you're giving a kid 92s, 94, 95 on drives. I don't see too many of those kind of drivers in, in, the, in the, uh, the kids that I teach. But if anybody wants me to email this to you, just send me, when my email address comes up, just send me an email and I'll shoot, <clears throat> I'll shoot a copy of it to you. Back up again, would you, Brian? I also show this to the kids after they've had one drive. I, I put a PowerPoint deal together, because uh, actually two drives. After they've had two drives, I show them the PowerPoint deal and, and I explain, you know, this explains where the grades are coming from. Because the 4.0 student, and maybe you guys can identify with this, I find this to be true, the 4.0 students really struggle when you give them an 82 on a drive. Here's a kid that has never gotten anything in their life but an A on everything they've ever done, but now they're doing a physical task, um, and they're not doing so well, maybe. And so I, I put this up, and, and uh, it helps the kids, you know, get it in their brain what, what it is we're looking for. This is another thing that, uh, oh, and this is in the packet that I'm giving you, and this is just part of it, but it's some hints to help your young driver during the next six months or more. And again, I'm emphasizing that or more. And this is a whole bunch of stuff. It, it just tells them, you know, how to set up practice. I think in there I mentioned don't yell. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff in there that, that I, I want the parents to see and, and understand. And on the parent drive, sometimes I just get one parent. And this way both parents can, can get uh, some of the teaching that I'm trying to do here. This is another thing that we put in there, you know, we're all supposed to give a certificate, certificate of completion and, uh, and then this is what they're supposed to take with them to the skills tester so the skills tester knows when they really truly completed their, their deal and, and when their six months is up. And, oh, that's my web page. And if, and if you want to use that, you can... Use the, I've got some instructors, that, all, the, all the Boise instructors have access to this and some of them use this in their classroom. There's a ton of stuff on there that you can use in a computer lab with a classroom setting or you can, uh, can have kids go do independent work on it. I've got a lot of quizzes in there out of the uh, Drive Right book, some practice tests out of the Drive Right book. So there's tons of material on there as well. And this is, I'm going to show you a couple videos here in a second. And uh, this is where I got them, and here's my email address right here. Any questions at this point before I, I do some other stuff? Yeah? Did, did you guys uh, give credit for, uh, and then show up on the transcript for the grade? Boy, I wish we could. Uh, Caldwell does. Uh, Bill Cooper's not in this group, I don't think. Uh, Bill Cooper got in, in Caldwell. They, he nailed it with his district that they get, I think, a half credit. That's the way to do it. And so I went to our people in the district, the big shots in our district, and I proposed it, proposed it, and they shot it down every time. I, I went out on several different years on that because I, I thought it might be an incentive to get more kids to take driver education because, as we all know, a lot of kids just wait till they're 17 and go out with no training. I had another question, but no problem. But, uh, and maybe this isn't fair to ask this, but you want parent participation and you require parent participation. What do you think about allowing kids to drive with their parents uh, while they're in driver's ed? Well, legally they're not supposed to. I know, but if they were to change that. Boy, I'd love that. I'd, 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 I'd vote for that one, yeah. Some states have the kids do the driving for X amount of months and then they take driver education. Ohio does it that way. Uh, I think that's not a bad plan either. So they work, with, work with the parents with what they can practice with their kids while you're in driver's ed, you think would be I think that. Yeah, I, I would like that. And you know, I'm gonna say this without the microphone. Every once in a while I suggest to a parent, take the kid to a parking lot someplace. I didn't say that, but uh, I think we've probably all done that before, too. And I tell them, you know, they're not supposed to. If a, if a police officer comes in and, you know, you're not supposed to be driving. But if they're on private property, so probably most police officers are not going to do much about it if they're not doing anything crazy. 
I tell them they, I tell kids they can drive on private property, but not on any public thing. Right. The other thing is, in my parent meetings of the last night, I tell the parents, hey, you don't have to sign off on it in six months. Of course, the kids get upset, but I said, look, I said, see this permit? It says it expires on five days after their 18th birthday. Kids, you can keep you on there until then. Well, if you want it if you want it up to six months, then you have to demonstrate to your folks that they feel comfortable. And I understand there was a AAA survey here a couple three years ago that said 40% of Idaho parents were signing off on the kid getting the license, even though there were three or four things they had major concerns about. And I tell the parents, you don't want to do that. In so many cases, the kids are running the household. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, a lot of parents are really eager to. to Stop being the taxi. Yeah. They want to. They want to. They, they want a kid that can drive the little siblings to soccer practice or you know whatever. Uh, the other thing I emphasize to parents at the parent class, and again the kids get really upset with me on this one, but I tell the parents, you know, you don't have to get insurance on that kid as long as he's driving with a permit. Yeah, and that's pretty cheap right there. No insurance necessary. The minute they get their own policy or their own, the minute they get their own license. Yeah, then they have to go get insurance. And boy, you see the parents, that one, that one, that one hits home. They start thinking about that one. Can we click on any of the links or just go to the next slide? Well, no, those links are in white links. I should have done that. What? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, any other questions before I start a video here? I've got two different videos. One of them, and maybe you've seen these, uh, Young Drivers, the High Risk Years. That's been around for a long time. Uh, this is a newer version of it. You know, the songs are a little bit more up to date, and, and you know, but uh, the three the three families they talk to are still the same three families. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull that one up if you would, Brian. Well, that's outside of PowerPoint. The volume isn't great. We, uh, Greg back here on the camera, Greg and I fiddled with this. I got my license this day. I'm pretty sure the first place I went when I got my license was Taco Bell. I was really excited. I don't like the room everywhere. It's a little friend's house. It's like a show off. Having that freedom. Go wherever you want to go. You don't have to depend on your parents anymore. Going on dates or something. You don't have to have your mom grow up. And this is on YouTube, so it's easy, easy for you to get a hold of. licenses earlier than in most other countries, and they have easier access to cars once they're licensed. In many families, giving the car keys to a newly licensed driver means not only freedom for the teenager, but also relief for the parents from seemingly endless chauffeuring duties. But it comes with a potentially high price. Crashes are the number one cause of death among teens. Per mile driven, the crash rate for teen drivers is four times the crash rate for adults. It's higher still at night, and it's higher when there are other teens riding in the vehicle. It's the highest still right after they get their license. In fact, the crash rate for 16-year-olds is twice as high as the crash rate for 18 and 19-year-olds. During the learner permit, when teens are doing practice driving with their parents in the car, crash rates are really low. That's a very safe way for teens to drive, but once the teen begins to drive without their parent in the car, crash rates skyrocket. Teens are inexperienced drivers. They're more likely to speed. I think it's fun. Going 80. 
85, I end up rushing a lot. They make more driving errors. I almost had a person like a week ago. They take corners too fast. Yeah, I flipped over my car. They may follow too closely. And I rear-ended them. They're not always able to handle a hazardous situation that pops up for the first time. Driving in bad weather, for example. It was raining outside, and we like skidded and like slid. An adult driver just has more experience handling a situation like that. Teen drivers tend to minimize their risk and overestimate their driving ability. I think I'm a good driver. Yeah, I'd say I'm a pretty good driver. I think I'm a pretty good driver. I would say I'm a good driver for now. And that can get them into trouble. She just loved people. She made things easy. And she had a lot of friends. Brandon was a good student. She loved to learn. She was really looking forward to going to college. I never will forget this. When uh, she had been looking, she had been watching the mail close for her acceptance letter to see if she got into JMU. And um, she went to the mailbox that day and she came on back. She came through that door and she said, yes, yes, yes. She opened up the envelope and then she looked and she looked and she said, I can see her now. She just said, yes, yes. Yes, she said. It was a beautiful January day. The sky was so pretty and blue, and the sun was bright. And it was just a lovely day. And that particular day, she didn't have to go to school until 11 o'clock. She sat there, and she ate a bowl of cereal, and she changed clothes three times before she left. I'm certain you can all tell this is going to have a tragic ending here, and it does. Uh, this lady goes on to talk about how her daughter died, <laughs> and you know, it's a sad story. Parents, parents need to see things like this, and they're not going to see it if you don't have the parents into a classroom setting with you. I can see a truck. And I could see the number. And I saw the sticker. And I knew it was our truck. <coughs> so I, I pulled over to the side of the road. And I asked that fireman. I said, little girl driving that truck, I said, is she hurt bad? He said, are you kin to her? I said, yes, I'm her mother. And for that time, two rescue squad wagons, one got one side of me and one got on the other side. And I said, the, the little girl driving that truck, I said, is she hurt bad? And the woman said, yes, ma'am. I said, is she dead? She said, yes, ma'am. Brandy was an inexperienced driver who died in a crash just one month after getting her license. Inexperience contributes to many crashes involving beginners. For 16-year-olds, the first few months of driving is in the... <coughs> she was probably the kind of child that every parent would hope to have. She took everything life had to offer and made the most of it. She had danced for almost 15 years. She had been a competitor in gymnastics, percussionist in the band, and she loved everything she did, and she could never get enough. Unfortunately, Shannon was 16. She was a teenager behind the wheel. She was going to a slumber party that night, and Shannon had a passenger in the car, and her friend had passed her. And probably a combination of, let me see what my little four-cylinder car can do, Rebecca saying, come on, Shannon, pass Heidi. And as Shannon tried to pass Heidi, Heidi moved over so Shannon couldn't get fired. Shannon lost control of the car. And um, she was um, hooked up to life support for 24 hours. But she got caught up in the spirit of the moment. 
little bit to your question. There's one more story on the same video about a young boy who wasn't driving. So good, everybody around you. The very best of kids. By the rule, kept the rules. Everybody loved him. The driver was driving too fast. There's what Gabriel said in songs on the radio. So it's party time, but she was in the back seat. And he was in the front seat, dancing with her. He was up, dancing with her. The driver might well have been distracted by that. Gabriel does not wear his seatbelt. He always wore a seatbelt. He used to tell me to wear a seatbelt. It's late at night, multiple teenagers, radio going on, and not much experience in driving. And here he was in a moment of carelessness. <coughs> Unguarded, all in carelessness. You know, he was dancing in a car instead of looking straight ahead of the seatbelt phone. He was dancing with the girl in the back seat. The driver was carried away also with the party that was going on in his car is what happened to 16 year olds. And the driver was not seriously hurt physically. The little girl was not seriously hurt physically. The girl's not here anymore. So that, that video is about 20 minutes long. Like I said, it's on YouTube. I'll put that back up at the very end, uh, the name of it, and you can just go to YouTube and pull it up. Uh, the next video is, is uh, put out by the Minnesota State Highway Patrol. This one's about eight minutes and 42 seconds long, and I'm gonna show the whole thing on this. This is, this is a really good one. This is really good. I like this officer here. officer. He was a passenger in a car driven by his father on a beautiful Saturday morning. A 17-year-old driver was up all night before starting his delivery job. He fell asleep at the wheel at 10 in the morning and hit and killed two motorcyclists before crashing head-on into the Gray's vehicle. My dad took the brunt of the crash with the brain injury that he suffered. Uh, made 
may never heal completely. He may never meet, return to his normal self. I haven't heard my dad speak to me in over a year and a half. And for that young male that was driving the pickup truck that changed our lives, he had the choice to pull over and stop when he was tired. And he didn't make that choice. And he, he uh, ruined a lot of people's lives because of his bad decision. Kaylee was a college student and she went to a party and knew it wasn't safe for her to drive home. So she gave her keys to a teen driver who then ran a stop sign at 2.30 in the morning and was T-boned by another vehicle. No one was wearing a seatbelt except the other driver. She was the only one conscious and able to call 911. Her call saved Kaylee's life. She was on a ventilator. She was, um, she couldn't breathe on her own. She had, her head was all wrapped up. Um, she wasn't responding. She was, that was horrible. <laughs> Most horrible thing a parent could ever walk into and see your child laying there. Just taking hour by hour to see if she was gonna make it. And that's what, that's all they were giving us. When we investigate a crash, there is always a point of impact. The place where the forces meet. Parents, today that point of impact is you. Your team faces the greatest risk of being injured or dying in a crash during their first year of licensure. And even good kids, smart kids, are still inexperienced drivers and can make bad driving decisions. Do you want your teen driver to be responsible for the crash that paralyzes someone, damages someone's brain, or severely injures someone? The rules you make and enforce with your teen driver today will have the greatest impact in keeping your new driver and the passengers in the vehicle safe. I felt ever since I saw both vehicles in the accident that the seatbelt would have saved a lot of this. I think pure and simple and I will never waver from that. Your teen is paying attention to you, even if they don't act like it. Here are five things you need to do to keep your teen driver safe. Model good driving behavior. Wear your seatbelt. Don't use your phone. Drive at safe speeds. Don't drive while impaired. Show your teen how to drive safely every time you get behind the wheel. Practice driving with your teen in different driving conditions. Even after your teen is licensed, they still need experience. Practice with them at night, in all weather conditions, on city streets, highways, and dangerous two-lane rural roads. Help them get the experience that they need to drive safely. Put safety ahead of convenience. While it can be convenient to have your teen drive to school, work, or activities, as a new driver, they are not always ready for the responsibility, especially during that first year after they get a license. Only you can decide when your teen is ready to safely drive without supervision. It's important to discuss driving responsibilities with your teen and make it clear what the consequences will be if your teen doesn't follow the rules. As hard as it may be, you need to follow through with consequences when the circumstances warrant it. Family rules during the first year of licensure should include drive only during daylight, no passengers under age 20 except family members, drive only in good weather conditions and when there is low traffic volume, and it's a good idea to use a written contract that states your family rules and the consequences for when those rules are broken. Finally, assure your teen that they can call you at any time, day or night. Be there for your teen if they ever need a safe ride home. It really needs to begin with the parents. Remind them that you are responsible for, for everybody in the vehicle. Um, and it's up to you to deliver everybody home safe. Parents have the ability to take those keys away um, from their from their teen driver, and they have the most influence on their on their teen's life. Drivers, ed teachers, law enforcement, we can talk about safe driving all day, but no one has a greater impact on your teen's safety than you. As a parent of a teen driver, you need to make and enforce the rules that can protect your child from being seriously injured or dying in a car crash. Don't think a life-changing crash can't happen to your family, because it can. Today is your point of impact. You have the power to ensure your team will come home safely every time they go out in a vehicle. Make sure that um, your children know that this is real life. You're not invincible. 
you can't, you will get hurt if you think you can do whatever you want. It can happen. It can happen to you. It can happen instantly. Change your life forever. I like that police officer's message. I mean, she's direct, right between the eyes. She tells the parents what they need to do in order to get their kids uh, to become safe drivers. I've got, these, I've got these packets for you here. I don't know the quickest way to distribute them, so... Uh, Uh, well, there it is right there. Yeah, these are the slides, and that's my email address if you need to get a hold of me. I'll be passing these around on one side, Brian, the other. Thank you guys for coming.